Okay, welcome back. I'm Dr. Lindner. This, we're now going to be looking at the uh, anatomy of the heart. Let's look at some of the anatomical structures. All right, we're going to look at how is blood brought into the right atrium. Blood is brought into the right atrium by way of this vessel here called the superior vena cava, and it's going to come up from the lower extremity via the inferior vena cava. So both through this vessel and this vessel, deoxygenated blood is brought into the right atrium. What we see here on the outside here is the right auricle. Here's the right auricle, deep to it, the right atrium. Here is the right ventricle. Here in that yellowish tan color is the interventricular septum. Septum means wall. So that interventricular septum is going to separate the right ventricle from the left ventricle. Here is your left atrium or your left auricle. So let's look at superficial structures first. We will get into the deeper structures after. Let's look at these two blood vessels here. We've already covered this one, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. This vessel coming off here is the aorta and arch of the aorta with three main blood vessels coming off of it. The one going to the right side of the body is the brachiocephalic, and the two going to the left side of the body. This one is called the left common carotid that as it goes up to the head will d further divide into an internal and external carotid. And then here's your left subclavian that will uh, go under the clavicle, under the armpit to the axilla, down into the arm to the brachial and divide into the forearm in f and fingers. Here's the descending aorta, and that will continue all the way down into the thoracic aorta, into the abdominal aorta. Here's your pulmonary trunk, which leads into your pulmonary, pulmonary trunk into your pulmonary arteries, but notice it's blue. Why is it blue? It's carrying deoxygenated blood, deoxygenated, into the lungs. After it becomes oxygenated, it leaves the lungs and goes into the pulmonary veins. The veins appear to be red in color. So here's the pulmonary veins on this side, and here are the pulmonary veins on this side, both pooling oxygenated blood into the left atrium. All right, what other structures do we have here? Let's look at some of the blood supply. If we look at the pulmonary trunk, we'll have a main blood vessel coming off one side of it and another branch off the other. That, w that is a clear uh, delineation between your right coronary and left coronary arteries. If we follow the right coronary down, the right coronary, as we follow it down to the apex of the heart, becomes the right marginal artery. The marginal follows to the apex of the heart. In the interventricular septum, there is an anterior interventricular artery. Now, if there's an anterior interventricular artery, we know there's going to be a posterior ventricular artery, which will be on the back side. We'll take a look at that in a second. Also, following around the heart is a circumflex artery. The circumflex artery will wrap around the heart and meet around to the right coronary. It kind of makes a loop. So your right coronary and left coronary will meet around the back via the circumflex. And then we have the anterior interventricular artery that will meet along with the posterior interventricular artery. That makes a full loop connecting the blood supply to the heart. So right anterior interventricular artery and a posterior interventricular artery, a right coronary artery and a left coronary artery. The left coronary will become the circumflex wrapping around the posterior side. This vein that follows in that in interventricular septum, or that also follows the anterior interventricular artery, is known as the great cardiac vein. And the great cardiac vein follows that same path, also leads to the posterior, there's the great cardiac vein, into the coronary sinus. Okay. Um, these are great, uh, I'm sorry, anterior cardiac veins that go to the uh, anterior part of the uh, right ventricle. You can see here, 
Those are your great, your anterior cardiac veins, I'm sorry. Now we're going to look at some of these structures on the inside of the heart. Okay, so now you can see that we have the superior vena cava bringing blood into the right atrium. Inferior vena cava bringing blood into the right atrium. When that blood pools and the pressure builds up, gravity is going to take it down into the next chamber, into the right ventricle. But it has to go through this valve right here. That's called your tricuspid valve. Now notice the tricuspid valve, when blood flows through right atrium to right ventricle, you can see these, these tendons, these chordae tendinae, that attach. You see it attaching to the papillary? So that's a papillary muscle which is an extension off of the trabecular carne. So you've got trabecular carne, these ridges that we see, the muscular part of the ventricles. We've got hills here called papillary muscles. We have chordae tendinae attaching to the tricuspid valve. We have them on this side too. We've got trabecular carne, papillary muscles, chordae tendinae attaching to the valve on the left side of the heart. All right, so that covers the right side. So after the pressure builds up in that ventricle, it's going to shunt blood upward. So as the blood is going up, this valve shuts and that valve right there opens. So blood is pumped inferior to superior up through that pulmonary semilunar. Here's your pulmonary trunk, and the pulmonary trunk goes into the left and right pulmonary arteries. They're blue because they're deoxygenated blood. That blood is going to the lungs. The lungs pick up the oxygen and brings blood, oxygenated blood, back into the left atrium by way of the pulmonary veins. So we have pulmonary veins on this side. Notice they're red because they're oxygenated and pulmonary veins on this side red because they're oxygenated. From both sides it will pull blood into the left atrium. When the pressure in the, in the left atrium, when that builds up, the blood will be going down into the ventricles by way of opening up that bicuspid valve, also known as the mitral valve. The valve opens, blood pulls into the left ventricle. When the pressure in the left ventricle builds up, it will pump blood up from inferior to superior. Notice the myocardium, how, how thick it is on the left side. Remember, this is systemic circulation, so it's going to pump blood up into the aortic semilunar. That's the aortic semilunar pumping blood up, and as that valve opens, this valve shuts. This shuts, this opens, blood is now pumped from the aortic semilunar into the aorta, into the aortic arch, and now it's bringing oxygenated blood into the brachiocephalic, going to the right arm into the common carotid going to the head and the left subclavian going into the left arm. Also going down into the descending aorta, into the abdominal aorta, which will bring oxygenated blood to most of the viscera, and then that will split into the uh, common iliacs, bringing blood to the lower extremity. So that covers our basic anatomy of the heart, and uh, hopefully you found that helpful.